Good morning. Brandon Hardison, glad to be with you. Today, continuing on, we want to talk about people who are fortunate to be in front of the room. And there's an old adage that says, uh, can you talk the talk or uh, are you just walking the walk? want to just go over some tips maybe to improve how our verbal communication to an audience, client, co-workers. I know all of us somewhere in our lives, if you are in front of the room or in front of a crowd or doing some speaking, probably heard. I know you probably had the right intentions, but it just didn't come across that way. We've uh, probably heard that somewhere in our life or maybe been coached by our bosses uh, with that. And things do happen. There's some things that you want to say when you're in front of the room. And sometimes it may come out the wrong way. Uh, I remember when I first started as a young trainer, uh, thought that uh, I was pretty good, had done some local politics and also was uh, successful on state and college uh, debate teams. Uh, but getting in front of the room, sometimes we do and react a little bit too fast. And here's what I mean by that. Very first time in New York City working for a big major Fortune 500 company, as their national sales trainer, we had some powerful decision makers and general managers in the room. And I was going through what I thought the model should look like for a sales process. When all of a sudden, one of them said, uh, we, we can't get our team members uh, to do that. It just wouldn't work. Instead of listening, hearing out the whole thing, thinking about what I should do to respond with that, uh, I just respond, well, then you just need to expect uh, less growth on, on every deal. Naturally, we got over it for that session. Uh, light talking, moved on to something else, uh, put them in small groups, did some role play. But I know that that manager in the room and some of the other ones uh, probably caught what I said by me being a little flippant by saying that they're not going to make growth. So my boss sat me down and she uh, was very kind and telling me that we're not going to allow you to do that again. And how we're going to do that is drop you a peg. So instead of national sales trainer, I come down to regional sales trainer. She said, you'll get it. You'll understand it. But for right now, we just can't be put in that position again with powerful people in the room. And she was right. So where am I going? What am I trying to say? Look back when you were in elementary school. I guarantee you had a parent, a guardian, a teacher that somewhere down the line told you that we need to make sure that our brain is engaged. We don't want to put our foot in our mouth. Don't want to engage one being your mouth before your brain has fully understood what's in front of it. Now, in some ways, you probably heard that, noticed it, or maybe you're still going through it. And that's why we're doing this quick little reminder. So quickly, always try to remember to slow down. If you're giving a speech front of the room, talk, whatever it may be, slow it down. Have you, have you ever noticed some of the greatest comedians versus some of the average ones knows about the punchline. In other words, they know what to say, when to stop, and wait for that reaction. If you've ever watched on TV or been fortunate to watch a comedian live or a powerful speaker, once they say something that they want the audience to remember and understand, they slow down and they stop. And if it's a comedian, you may hear some giggles right in the front because they catch it. But it takes time for the people in career to understand what you had just said, compute it in their heads and say, oh, that's what he means. That's what she means. 
So if we slow it down from the beginning, talking to a large group, speaking to your class, whatever it may be, your coworkers, I guarantee you, uh, you'll go a lot further as far as them receiving whatever you're trying to tell them. Because we talked before about content and we know content is pretty much everything that we want to do, but the delivery and how we do it is still most important in my mind. How about speaking confidently? Uh, don't have to get loud. Don't have to really be arrogant, but the words you use and how your nonverbal comes across because you've been in that place before. They, they haven't. You're giving them the bigger picture and how to take not just a buckshot and scatter, but how to zoom right in and hit definitely what you're looking for in that mark. That's what your speech should be about. Confidence. I, I've been here before. And the last thing, how about practicing? For some reason, people do not see uh, the power of uh, practicing. I don't care if you were on a team sport, high school, college, professional, individual sport, tennis, golf, uh, even if it is anything that deals with board games or cards. Um, people practice. If you want to get better at what you do, you have to put the time in. Believe me, especially being in front of the room, you're going to have people in front of you. You're going to want to tense up and you're going to get nervous. All these things do happen, even on a live broadcast like we're doing here now. So I strongly would suggest practicing, practicing. Well, all I have is Zamir. I'll take that for right now. Uh, all I have is my little pet. I'll take that for right now. But if you can get a recorder, and on most devices that we have nowadays, there's a app on there for recording. But if you can just record yourself, your tonality, how you're coming across articulately or not, if the emphasis that you're trying to get to the crowd is there, if you just practice and don't do that Alan Iverson is just practice, even though most people still don't understand the full gist of that one. That's another story. But we need to practice. When you do practice, it doesn't make perfect because nothing in this world is perfect, but it makes improvement. And that's what we're trying to do when we speak. We want to improve each time because by having that improvement, that's where consistency comes from. And once you're consistent, now the message from that content or what you're trying to give to that group is always going to be there. So a good place to start, once again, I would say is practice. But speaking slower, speaking with confidence will give you, as a front of the room or online host, Whatever message you're trying to get out, sure, I can talk to talk, but I can also walk the walk. Once again, this is Brandon Hardison for Champion Strategies. Make it a champion day.